1 John today, but we're going to start in John, in chapter 13 of the book of John. Let's start in verse 1, John 13, kind of by way of intro. Now, before the feast of the Passover, when Yeshua knew that his hour was come, that he should depart out of this world unto the Father, having loved his own which were in the world, he loved them until the end. And supper being ended, the devil, having now put into the heart of Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, to betray him, Yeshua, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands, that he was come from Elohim, that he went to Elohim, he rises up from supper, and he laid aside his garments, and he took a towel, and he girded himself. And after that, he poureth water into a basin, and he began to wash the disciples' feet, and to wipe them with a towel wherewith he had girded. He was girded. Then cometh he to Simon Peter, and Peter saith unto him, Lord, dost thou wash my feet? And Yeshua answered and said unto him, What I do thou knowest not now, but thou shalt know hereafter. And Peter said unto him, Thou shalt never wash my feet. And Yeshua answered him, If I wash thee not, thou hast no part with me. Simon Peter saith unto him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. He's like, oh, if we're going to be like that, give me a bath. Yeshua said unto him, He that is washed needeth not save to wash his feet, but is clean every whit. And ye are clean, but not all. For he knew who should betray him, therefore said he, Ye are not all clean. So after he had washed their feet, and had taken his garments, and was set down again, he said unto them, Know ye what I have done to you? Do y'all know what I just did? You call me Master and Lord, and ye say, Well, for so I am. If I then, your Lord and Master, have washed your feet, ye also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have given you an example, that you should also do as I have done to you. Verily, verily, I say unto you, the servant is not greater than the Lord, neither he that is sent greater than he that sent him. If ye know these things, happy are ye, happy are ye if ye do them. And then kind of skip ahead to verse 34. <coughs> A new commandment, this is Yeshua speaking. A new commandment I give unto you, that you love one another as I have loved you, that you also love one another. By this shall all men know that ye are my disciples, if ye have love one for another. And we talked about this when we covered this in John. Yeshua says, I give you a new commandment, but the commandment itself is not new. It's just the first time Yeshua is emphasizing this with the people. If you don't have a note in your Bible right here, you might want to put Leviticus 19.18, because that's where we're going next. Leviticus 19.18. Thou shalt not avenge, nor bear any grudge against the children of thy people, but thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. I am Yahweh. So see, it's not a new commandment per se. We covered that before. All of that was by way of intro for what we're going to look at today in 1 John chapter 4. Today's sermon is titled, Dun Dun Dun, Love Your Brother. All right, let's pick up in verse 7 of 1 John chapter 4. Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of Elohim, and everyone that loves is born of Elohim and knows Elohim. Right away, when it says, Beloved, who is John speaking to? Beloved. He's, talk, he's writing a letter. He's writing a letter to the Beloved. It's the Beloved of Yah. 
It's those who Yah love. So presumably that's also us that this applies to. But when he wrote this, it's understand you, you are be- the people he's writing to are beloved of Yah. Love one another. So when he says beloved, he's not talking to Buddhists. Buddhists are not beloved of Yah in this context. He's not talking to Muslims. He's certainly not talking to Satanists. So when he says, love one another, he's saying, beloved, here's who I'm talking to, beloved, love one another. Can you see that, where that's going? That is inclusive, and it's also exclusive. It goes to, and I could take it on a tangent and talk for the rest of the sermon about tribe, but it's about the us, the beloved of Yah, and the others. He's focusing inward on the beloved of Yah, and he says, love one another. He that knows Elohim, oh, whoop, that was the verse before that. Love one another, for love is of Elohim. Love comes from God. It emanates from him. It starts with him. That's where it comes from. And and that's really the the key of what we're going to look at today. Everyone that loves is born of Elohim and knows Elohim. He that loves not... (laughs) Knows not Elohim, for Elohim is love. The main essence of Elohim is love. And we are of him. He loves us. We're going to get into that today, too. We are to love. And if people don't feel the love, I'm not feeling it. Right? You guys have heard that phrase, I'm not feeling it. I'm not feeling the love. You're not feeling the love. We have some deep soul searching to do. We got to love the brethren. Verse 9, in this was manifested the love of Elohim towards us because Elohim sent his only begotten son into the world that we might live through him. Herein is love, not that we loved Elohim, but that he loved us and he sent his son to be the, it says in King James, propitiation for our sins. Does somebody have another word than propitiation? What? Okay, so atonement is the word I'm looking for. That's what Brother Richard said. What was your word, sister? Kapara. Yeah, I don't even know that word. Okay. It's atonement. Yeshua is the atonement for our sins. That's how much Yah loved us. Now think about this. He could have... Yah could have sent Yeshua to serve as an example for us to emulate. Only. Just as an example. That would have been good. Then we would know we need to follow and act like Jesus because he was a good example. And that would have been good. He could have sent him to be a teacher. See, as an example, he would have come and lived Torah perfectly. And it's like, look at this guy. He lived Torah perfectly. Go now and do likewise. Full stop. That would have been good. He could have sent Yeshua to be a teacher. He comes, he teaches us more about the way, he teaches us what the Father wants. That would have been great. But instead, what he did is he sent him to die for us, for our sins. And that's like, I mean, awesome is a word that I don't think quite gets it here. Of course he was an example, of course he was a teacher, but the main thing he did is he took away our sins. The Father did that, and he did that because he loved us. Because if he didn't love us, he would have said, you guys are dead in your sins, and I'm not doing anything for you. But he didn't. And what he did for us was beyond anything we could repay. Greater love hath no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. That's on our level. That's a man. You cannot express love any more than laying down your life for your friends. That's the, the ultimate expression of love. That's what Yeshua did for each and every one of us. Beloved, again, us, beloved of Yah. If Elohim so loved us, we ought also to love him. One another. See, people think about that too. It's like, God loves me, I love God. 
if he loved us in that way, what we need to do if we want to try to repay it, if we want to try to show that we appreciate what, we, what he did for us, if we want to try and act in the way he wants us to act, is to love one another. He loves us, so we love one another. That doesn't really make sense if you think about it in the way I think most definitely Americans think. He loves me, so I'm going to give him love back. You love me, I love you. We're good. No, he loves us, we love each other. Spread the love, share the love. My wife says that to me every now and then. Share the love, baby. <laughs> That's what he wants us to do, love one another. Go back to uh, John chapter 13. Keep your finger here, go back to John 13. John 13, I think 14, yep. Yeshua says, if I then, your Lord and Master, have washed your feet, you ought to wash my feet. I scratch your back, you scratch mine, right? See, isn't that the way of the world? Isn't that the way people think? I did a good turn for you, I deserve a good turn back. No, Yeshua said, I've washed your feet, what I want you to do now is go wash everybody else's feet. Show the love. Take what I have given you as an act, as an example, as a demonstration, and go and do. Likewise. He's not doing it so that you reflect it back at him. I think a lot of times we think as people, what's in it for me? We're selfish. What do I get out of it? Or we think it's kind of reverse selfishism. I did this for that person, therefore I'm kind of expecting them to do something for me. It's best just to do good and not expect anything back. If you kind of want your reward now, you're going to get your reward now, right? Mm -hmm. I had two friends when I was in high school. They were really good friends. They've been friends since like first grade. And I remember thinking it was really stupid of them. Every Christmas, they got each other a pretty cool Christmas present. You know, whatever an eighth grader can afford, they would do really well to buy their friend that gift. And yet they would always complain to each other afterwards that I got you a better gift. Well, I got you a double album set and you only got me a cassette. Yeah, but I got you a brand new cassette. and that, I mean, they, they did that all the time. And I watched this go on for years until... They finally decided one year, okay, how about you give me $20 and I'll go buy my present and I give you $20 to you buy your present. That's what they did. And then they said, well, this is stupid. The next year we'll just go buy ourselves a present and say it's from you. I mean, they were good guys, <laughs> you know, generally. I mean, I liked them. But think about how ridiculous that is. It's like if you want to give somebody a gift, give it to them. And I guess I'm going here because I was just talking about this the other day with my daughter Janelle. We used to do Christmas. We did the Christmas present thing, and we probably overspent on Christmas, although we didn't go into debt buying presents. But during the year, if I saw something like a Vaughn 22-ounce hatchet that I wanted to get for all three of my kids, and I found it in June, I would buy it, and it would be in the back of my closet until December. And then I'd, where did I put that stuff I bought the kids? And then I would get it out, and I'd give them all the presents in, in Christmas time. That's what I would do. Now, I just buy a present, and I'm like, here, I got you a present, just because I felt like doing it. It feels a lot better to me to do that. It's just like, here, I don't have a reason to give you this. I'm just, what father doesn't like to give his children good gifts? We are supposed to give love without wanting to get it back from that person. I don't think you're truly giving love if you want it back. It's just give it. We are certainly supposed to do that vis-a-vis -vis the Father. He loves us, so we are supposed to love others. All right, where am I? Beloved, if Elohim so loved us, we ought also to love one another. No man has seen Elohim at any time. If we love one another, Elohim dwells in us, and his love is perfected in us. Does anybody have a word other than perfected? A non-Jewish word or, <laughs> or a Greek word. Another English word. Perfected means to come to the fullness of, in this case. It doesn't mean like perfect love. It means the fullness of love. And so, 
If we love one another, Elohim dwells in us. That's like it shows that Elohim dwells in us. And his love has come into fruition in us. He loved us. Now we're sharing that love with others. Mission accomplished from Yah's perspective. It's perfected. It's come to fruition. Hereby know we that we dwell in him and he in us. Remember when, when John was talking about abide in him and he abides in us? Well, now we dwell in him and he dwells in us. Because he has given us of his spirit. And we have seen. Now this is John talking about himself and the other apostles here. We have seen and do testify the Father sent the Son to be the Savior of the world. So he's just given another plus for Yeshua. We've seen, I'm standing up here in front and tell you this, that he, the Father sent Yeshua to be the Savior of the world. Whosoever shall confess that Yeshua is the Son of God, Elohim, Elohim dwells in him, and he in Elohim. We talked about that a week or so ago. And we have known and believed in the love that Elohim has to us. Elohim is love. And he that dwells in love dwells in Elohim, and Elohim in him. Dwell in love. If you dwell in love, if you live in love, if you surround yourself in the, the thoughts, if you will, of loving your brethren, you're starting to live like Elohim wanted you to. He's dwelling in you, and you are dwelling in him, and that gets to what Hebrew word? Abide in me, I abide in you. Dwell in me, I dwell in you. Echad, one. You are becoming one with Elohim, with the love. It's hard to feel that sometimes. It's like, well, he did me wrong. She did me wrong. I'm, I'm going to hold back some love. We can't do that. Not if we want to be with Elohim. We did a lot of things wrong as far as Yahweh is concerned. And he didn't hold back the love from us. He sent his only begotten son, Yeshua, to die for us. 17. Herein is our love made perfect. Herein is our love made full. Herein is our love made complete. That we may have boldness in the day of judgment... Because he is, as he is, so are we in this world. Does somebody have another word than boldness in the day of judgment? Confidence, Confidence is a better word. It means you are standing in front of Yeshua all by yourself in the day of judgment, and you can be confident because you have the love of Yah. He loves you. You know it. You've been sharing that love, and it's like, I got it. I love you, you love me, I'm confident where this is going. It's a good place to be. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear, because fear has torment. He that fears is not made perfect in love. What about fear Yahweh? That sounds like a contradiction, right? We're told to fear the Father, fear Yahweh. This fear right here is fear of losing your salvation. You should be confident in your salvation. You either have the Holy Spirit in you or you don't. You should be confident. And it's the fear of everything else. Who cares? What are you going to do to me? We shouldn't be afraid to die. We shouldn't be afraid of what life is bringing us. Coulda, shoulda, woulda. We don't know. But if we have the love of Yah, if he be with me, who can stand against me? Right? If we're, in, if we're infused in love, we don't have time to fear all this silly worldly stuff. It doesn't matter to us. We know where we're going. Is there a song, This World Is Not My Home? Not that I know of. There is. I think there is. We're here. We've got work to do. He expects us to act a certain way while we're here, but this isn't where, where we belong. We belong with him. And when we're with him, we're part of the love. I mean, it, it's over and over and over, the love, the love, the love, the love. That's because it's important, and it's because we don't normally think this way. We can read through these words and go, yep, got it, love the brothers. Love you, man. Love you, brother. Boom, boom. That's how guys hug, right? Boom, boom. Love you, man. It's deeper than that. 
I could go into that biblical set of scriptures, but I'll, I'm not going to right now. The, not the biblical set of scriptures, the ones that you read at weddings. Love doesn't count wrongs. Love is... Herein is our love made perfect, complete, that we may have boldness in the day of judgment, because as he is, so are we, ichad, in this world. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear, because fear has torment. I read this, and fear is not made perfect in love. We love him because he first loved us. We love him because he first loved us. Our love that we feel... Our love that we express comes from Yah. That's a Yah love. When we reflect it back to him, when we say we love him, when we say we love our brethren, that's his love. It comes from him, meaning it emanates from him, it originates from him. He produced it. He's given it to us, and we send it out. If any man say, I love Elohim and hates his brother, he's a liar. For he that loves not his brother whom he has seen, how can he love Elohim who he has not seen? We can be mad at our brethren. We can. We can be disappointed in our brethren. We can be disgusted with our brethren. But man, we got to have that love of Yah for our brethren. That's men and women. If we are united in Yah, we're united in Yah. You know, that's a problem with man and religion. I remember when I was a Protestant, you got these Protestants who are all arguing, I'm a Baptist, I'm a Methodist, I'm a Lutheran, I'm a whatever. And they all get, they don't really like the other ones because you guys don't understand and you don't get it. And I thought I'd get away from that when I came to the understanding that we're supposed to keep Torah and also love Yeshua. Man, there's denominations in this, too, isn't there? There's all kinds of denominations. But I submit to you that if somebody, Revelation 12, 17, keeps the commandments of Yah, does anybody do that perfectly? <laughs> Nobody does that perfectly. So I, I say you got to modify that. They're attempting to keep the commandments of Yah, and they have a testimony of Yeshua HaMashiach, of Jesus Christ. That's our brother. Whether they want to wear kippahs or the women want to wear skirts or not, whether whatever, that's our brethren. And we can disagree. And like I said, we can have other negative emotions. But man, that's our brother. We got to love them. They are beloved of Yah. And nobody here, nobody there has it all figured out yet. We're all trying to walk in the way. And so... And I'm probably one of the, not worst offenders, but I'm certainly an offender in this. I'm a very judgmental person. I realize that. We need to cut some slack for our brethren. We need to show some love for our brethren. I'm not just talking about just here, sitting here in this circle. I'm talking about the brethren, the beloved of Yah. And this commandment we have from him, that he who loves Elohim loves his brother also. One more time, back to John 13, 34. First John 13, 34. A new commandment I give unto you, that you love one another as I have loved you, that you also love one another. By this shall all men know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another. Yeshua didn't say, all men will know you're my disciples if you wear zizi. All men will know you're my disciples if you cover your hair and wear a skirt. He said, all men will know you're my disciples if you love one another. I would like everybody, I'm certainly going to, to take some time this week and find those places in your heart where you've got like that hardness and that darkness that you're not letting Yah's love come out. Because Yah loves those people. He sent his son to die for them. So who are we, as, as much lesser humans, not to share that love with those people? 
Love one another. Love your brother. Let's pray.